Greetings Metalheads and welcome to another edition of Friday the 13th Metal YouTube channel. Today you're going to be listening to a audio interview with Torg from the band Conception. Hope you like it. This was done in the early 90s. So please enjoy, share on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thanks for watching, like I said. Uh, be safe. There's plenty more interviews coming, audio ones. So there's bands from the 80s and 90s. Hundreds and hundreds of interviews I've done. So yeah, listen to them when they're online. Very interesting to listen to. So thanks again. Stay safe, be metal, and I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. First of all, I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, each previous albums for mm -hmm. the band. Could you tell me how well they sold? How they sold? Yeah. Yeah, well, first we had um, first we had The Last Sunset. This was self-financed. Yeah. And uh, this sold in 5,000 copies. Uh, most of the copies were sold then in Norway, Germany and Japan. And that's the self-financed one? Yeah, that was 4,000 4, CDs and 1,000 albums. Or, I mean, 4,000 of them were sold and 1,000 were giveaways, you know. For yeah, I got a copy of the, of the uh, yeah. Scott Farnham's. A friend then, of mine in Norway bought me it, so it was kind of cool. Sorry? A friend of mine in Norway bought me the CD before you, Sam's and his records. Okay, so, uh, who, who was this? Um, I can't remember his name. I don't write to him anymore, but... Okay. Uh, there used to be English radio called Radio 1. And Tommy Vance used to play your songs all yeah. the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> so... <laughs> kind of cool like so so how many albums did you sell of the second album uh second album i uh, the total figures i can't give like I, I don't know the exact amount but i would say seventy thousand or something yeah parallel mines yeah cool and um and then the last sense it was re-released and uh, that sold less than parallel mines but that sold also quite well yeah. as, as the re-release in 94 then we did um, uh, In Your Multitude. This album did not really um, do uh, fulfill our expectations. So that was all, uh, that's all less. I don't know, 40, 50,000. Why do you think it didn't sell so well, the last album? I think it's a really good album, actually. Yeah, thank you very much. No, well, uh, I think for two reasons. The one big reason is that the record company didn't give a fucking shit about promoting this album. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. I think they had good expectations themselves. We had a, a good uh, budget for the studio and everything looked very bright and they got the album and they loved it. And I think they more or less sold it. Uh, they thought they would sell it, uh, that the album will sell on its own since we had, especially in Germany and Japan, we had this like, you know, uh, one of the best newcomers and blah 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 status, you know, and then uh, they thought, okay, this is gonna, you know, go, you know, because uh, also we, we were in debt because we have been spending quite a lot of money, so they probably would like to save in, you know, and and they've just fucked it all up. And at the same time, I mean, it's not the most commercial. It's this album is, I think, it's also a very good album, but it's probably the most hard to get into album, an album you need to to really listen to. I really didn't think so, really. I thought it was no? quite easy to get into. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. that, that always works different from people to people, but like most people I talked to, they like had to uh, listen to it quite a lot before they really got the picture of it. But anyway, uh, so, uh, I mean, the songs, I mean, the, the chorus, is the, they were not so striking as on the Parallel Minds. This was more based around the music, the you know the instrumentals i mean not the instrumental parts but like what's underneath the vocals and right. and we paid too less attention maybe on the vocals i don't know i still like this album but yeah. uh, anyway this didn't do as good as uh, parallel minds but now we're back with uh, this flow so new great expectations and <laughs> yeah. yeah but i mean we had now a um, very very good the response for, from the press so uh, this looks quite bright Cool, cool. Yeah, I noticed on the In Your Mutation album, there was a most of album, there was a, some like yes sort of sounds in there from the band Yes. You know? yeah, yeah, that's very true because actually um, uh, after Parallel Minds, I got told into, I had like a period where I was for one year or two just collecting Yes albums and I was a total Yes fan. So, uh, so this is 
what what you're saying that might be very very right yeah mm. so what, what do you think was noise records what was the problem with this album i mean <coughs> um the big problem at this time was um we always had carl alterbach the the boss from noise he was he was the guy who signed us he we were like more or less his baby he took care of us himself and then all of a sudden he moved to LA to start a new record company and had new people. And these people didn't really know how to uh, to work with us and some of them were really horrible too. They're gone now um, from the record company and they had also, you know, intern problems. Uh, I don't know how much that has to do with conception, but there were some people working for Noise at this time where, which were not really too good for us. He was one of them Thomas, or was Thomas cool? Yeah. He was one of them. He was one of them. <laughs> he was actually the biggest one of them. <laughs> you had some fun experiences with him too? Um, no, no, I mean sometimes I advertise, he advertised in the fanzine and it took him a long time to pay me. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of like made me feel a little bit, I got stressed uh, out and shit. No, I mean he was, uh, he was like, you know, for hanging with a nice guy, but he had no clue what he was doing in terms of, of work. So uh, anyway, he's uh, gone and now, uh, now, uh, now, well, we had then uh, also some problems with the record company, but uh, this is all sorted out now, and we have a very good relationship to them now. Now they're kicking ass, and now they have got new people in again, and this time the people know how to handle this, I think. Right, cool. So what's the biggest selling country for Conception? <laughs> biggest selling? Uh, I think that must be Japan. Yeah, I think Japan's Japan. everywhere for yeah. America, for metal music. Germany is also very good for us, and now also... Uh, Spain and Italy and Fro and uh, Greek Greece. Yeah. Mm. What about your own country, Norway? With all this black metal stuff still around, is it? No Can way it? in Norway. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, no. I mean, um, actually, we're gonna do something. Well, we had with the with the last sunset, then we had like good sales were played very often in radio and stuff here, and the, the press was supporting us. Then we signed to uh, a German label. You have something in Norway called Janteloven, and uh, that's uh, that's like a law for don't think that you are better than us or whatever. And if you go abroad, then you were shit. Then uh, that that was our problem. They, I mean, for a band like us, of course you have to go out of this country. I mean, Norway is so little, and for our kind of music, we have no chance. And also, loads of Norwegian bands, they're just they're just. Uh, being locked in in this country, yeah. and so um, signing to a Norwegian label, so we so we had to go, uh, you know, to a foreign country and find a label like Noise, and uh, and so we did, and then uh, then the press started hating us. So we had a problem, you know. Then all of a sudden we didn't have we had the the metal press, of course, still on our side, and the rock press. But in Norway, you need the big time the the newspapers because this is a very small country. Yeah. And then they turned it back on us. So uh, we had kind of sucks already because you would have thought they'd give you more support for the band trying to get a record deal. Yeah. So they put them down. No, I was really, really shocked. I, actually, we're actually one of the most, uh, we're the, f band, the fourth band in Norway with most success in the in, in the uh, international level. Alongside TNT was one of them, I guess. Yeah, uh, it was TNT and then Aha pop band <laughs> and another yeah, pop band then. called Secret Garden and then then you have us as the cool. So, um, so I mean, uh, okay, we didn't have big time airplay on MTV, but they played us a couple of times. No Norwegian artists, except from TNT or or our uh, and shit like this, are played on MTV. But still, Norwegian telly couldn't play us. You know, we had these problems. Now it kind of seems some of them are now turning back to us. Just a few of them, and we're gonna do now. Now we're just gonna go for it ourselves. We never did much for Norway either, because we had all these other territories to concentrate uh, about. So, um, so we're actually going on a Norwegian tour, our very first Norwegian tour, starting uh, the 17th of April. It's gonna last for uh, about a month. Yeah, you're going on tour with. Uh, no, that this is only us. We're gonna have local support bands. Say a really good Norwegian band. I heard a demo a band called Spiral Architect. Yeah, I know them. They're a really cool band. They're yeah. really good musicians. It's very, it's very progressive. Uh, yeah, I know them. Are they got an album coming out? Do you know? Yeah, I think they're they're working on it right now. I don't know if they're in the studio. But, um, I think they're uh, they are planning to do an album. They're uh, it's gonna be it's under recording or it's gonna be recorded pretty soon. I think. Yeah, that's cool, because I think it's the, uh, is it Is, is Gara, the guy in the band, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, the guy okay, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I know him. He was actually uh, uh, doing some of the cover artwork for us this time. That's cool. That's cool. Right then, my next question to Augie is: uh, Which is your most favorite LP and why? And which is your least favorite album and why? My favorite album that's Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I'm sorry, I mean the Conception album. Oh, Conception like, album. Yeah. Well, the best Conception album for me is Flow, of course. Sorry? Flow, the last one. Oh, the new one. Yeah, that's yeah. Be, this is because, <coughs> first of all, because it's the last one, so I have to say it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because um, uh, I think we have matured. I mean, as the musicians, this is a more grown up kind of playing style kind of album you were kind of bent off from all the egos just concentrated around the music and this is much more a band thing than before it's much stronger songs I think I like you know the direction the production very much and I'm very 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 proud of this album and what about your previous albums which one's your favourite your previous ones uh, Pearl of Mines yeah which is your, why, why is that your favourite one Sorry? Why is that your favourite album? Uh, from the songs, from yeah. the songs, the atmosphere is from the songs. What about your least favourite album that Conception has released? I don't really know, I mean, uh, I do like all of them very much, but yeah. uh, The Last Sunset is for me also a very cool album, it's very charming in a way, it was so at the beginning, so uh, I think it's actually in your multitude, which would be the least favourite album. Oh, it's kind of strange. Right then, next question is, um, is the lineup still the same? Because I, I only have a promo CD. Oh yeah. I don't even know what the songs are, I don't even know what the cover looks like or anything. Oh? No. You don't have got the real CD yet? Because, no, I got a CD from Sandra. All it said was, play this and we'll call you later. And I knew straight away it was Conception before I put it on. I had a funny yeah. feeling that it was going to be your band. <laughs> you know, and it was from the head Roy's voice, like, yep, yeah, this yeah. is Conception. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, that's funny they didn't send you the real uh, copy later. I haven't got it yet. Has it been released then? Uh, yeah, it was released, uh, well, here in Norway, it was released now on Monday. You have to kick, kick Sandra's ass for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the same one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll tell her next time I speak to her, or if you speak to her yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I won't speak to her for a while, actually. Okay, no, but I'll, I'll tell her next time I speak to her. Yeah. No, well, um, um... Yeah, well, was there a question? Line up, your line up is the same. Yeah, line up. Um, the line up is the same as ever. Uh, oh. We're using the same keyboard as on the, in the Multitude. Uh -huh. On the booklet, actually, he since I don't have it, I'm going to give you some information about the booklet. Uh, he's uh, listed among us, not as a session musician, but concept, uh, Conception are five members on the list, but are pictures of four. Right. So he's more an associated member, you could say. Like uh, He's so involved in this album, I thought it was fair. He, I mean, his musicianship is as important as our musicianship on this album. Is this the guy that you brought on tour with you when you, went, when you played in yeah, yeah, yeah. Skyclad? Yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's him. Yeah. Right, cool. Excellent. Right then, my next question is, so why has it taken the band such a long time to come back with a new album? Yeah, the, um, this was a bit f the, the period after the release of In Your Multitude was a little bit funny for us. Um, first, we were waiting for tours, 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 nothing came. So uh, we had just had some gigs there and there, a festival and uh, just some shows and no tours. And we were waiting, we had a couple of tours, we really thought we had them in the pocket. Just the, the just the signature on the contract was missing, and then we were not. You don't get it anyway, after all. So then started looking again and again, and the record sales didn't do what we thought they would. So we were a little bit frustrated. And uh, at the same time, we're also a very hard working band. Uh, like we rehearsed the shit out of ourselves, like uh, on just for this last album, six days a week rehearsals for months and months so uh, having been working so hard with Conception we, we needed a break to, to, to do some other stuff um, so we took half a year off where I went to Germany first for a couple of months I helped out Tommy Newton producing the Victory album I was producing the guitars there and engineering and then uh, then I did uh, uh, for two months uh, the, 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 this is a, an American drummer it's called John McAuluso some people might know him from TNT or Riot right 
Um, he uh, came from. Uh, he came up here, and we were songwriting for two months. So we have been writing material for uh, for uh, like a side project. So this is going to be recorded later. Now we have to find the time again. First, we have to. Well, I have to uh, do tourings and all that shit for construction first, and then this is going to be later. So you had an Ingar, he was doing, uh, he was... Uh, he's black metal, he likes his black metal, doesn't he? Yeah, you heard <laughs> this, uh, this EP? No, I haven't, no. No, no, because he, he, uh, he made a, a solo thing you know, that's called Crest of Darkness. So oh, this is really true. I know okay. when you played in Bradford, he asked me to play drums in his black metal band. I said, yeah, but he never got back to me on it. Okay. Yeah, no, that was a long time ago. No, but he actually did, did release a black metal EP. <laughs> That's released to a new club last, I think. Yeah? Yeah. What's the name of the band? Um, oh shit, I just said it. Uh, Crest of Darkness. No, I haven't received that one. Quench My Thirst. No, what do you think to his project? Uh, well, it's not my style of music, but I think it's good. It's good. Yeah. But it's very important. What was very important for us was like, and I had to, and I, what I did with John was like, you know, loads of Latin and jazz rock kind of things, and um, uh, of course with a metal edge to it. But uh, there were things you you just had ideas, you just had to get out, and the same shit with Ingar. And this would be, I mean, Ingar, we couldn't blend black metal into conception. That would be wrong. So I mean, it's very important that you then can uh, get some channels where you actually can. Uh, get these ideas out, out of your system. Mm -hmm. This was very good. So, no, I think his, his album is, is good. He's now working on a full-length album, actually. Yeah, excellent. What's your project you're doing? What's it going to be? What style of music are you going to do? Well, we're going to do every kind of style. Um, the basic idea for us was just we're going to write and we're going to just think about music, not about what's selling. Maybe we're going to end up with an album which nobody will understand or, or want to buy, I don't know. But we're just going to like very long songs very progressive loads of latin jazz rock influences but still very heavy uh, a lot of old pink floyd it's uh, i mean the i can actually send you uh, uh, a demo from this if yeah you want. please i still live at the same address yeah i don't know i should write down your address though yeah i'll give you the address at the end of the interview yeah so, uh, what about Roy? Has he been doing anything since uh, no, the he's, project? Or no, I think he was more relaxing here in Arva, just took the time to breathe and come come back down to the earth and just get our minds together. I think Roy was studying some philosophical subjects, I don't know, and uh, Arva was just just hanging. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Right then, Tog, my next question is, uh, could you tell me a, little, a bit about the title of the new album? What's it called again? Um, the album is called Flow. Yeah. Uh, did you have any other titles besides Flow? And sorry? What, did you have any other titles besides Flow? The other titles? Mm hmm. Did you have any other ones in mind? Sorry, I don't know. Which, which other titles did you have in mind besides Flow? For the album? Yeah. No title. This was uh, <laughs> last minute idea. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. But that that was cool. We, we uh, at the end we got a uh, quite good uh, concept around the whole thing. So actually, the album cover is in all all in green colors, green uh, uh, shades of green. So uh, this is like um, it's not a, a concept album in a way, but you still have this concept around it. So this and uh, this color green that's the color of hope and the uh, color of spring so th this is like a very um, positive album we're very sick and tired of all these alternative and very aggressive bands who always thinks about how shitty life is and how yeah. crap the world is i mean we heard this for so many years and okay it's not really the most happening place right now the earth so but anyway we don't need to be reminded about this time and time and time and time again and there is actually something you can do to in order to get a better life so the whole kind of thing when you see all the songs they're pretty much about finding harmony with yourself inner peace be the one that you are I mean flow comes from flow into your mind you know listen to yourself be the person that you are and just try to make the best out of things and think about the the good sides in life also when it's when it looks like shit right can you hold on a minute please Chuck? Yep. we'll be a second thanks yep. please talk sorry about that uh, <laughs> you know right. so, so your title's called Flow and uh, what's the cover? Flow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the color concept there yeah, was that right, with all, everything in the color of green, and uh, you have a head again, 
uh, a little bit similar to the heads from Parallel Minds. Right. But uh, this time it's a picture and uh, computer animated. And, uh, um, I mean, there's not really a message behind the head. This is just like um, a recognized element, you could say, because we also changed the logo and since also the style of the cover has changed, we wanted to have something which you still, you know, could recognize. Alright, so what's the cover, what's the uh, logo like now? You changed the logo. Yeah, the, the logo now is like, you know, old uh, typewriter letters yeah. and everything in small. Oh, right, because I kind of like the old logo. Yeah, I like Shame the old logo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the old logo too, but <clears throat> I was think that the three first albums are a little bit more, you know, very 80s kind of music, while this new one is, you know, a little step into the 90s. Right. So, um, therefore, I mean, the logo is also typical 80s Halloween and all that shit. So, uh, so therefore, we wanted to, to also change the logo, so we, because we feel this, this is modern music, in a way, still with a heart in the 80s, so, uh, so not to scare off eventually, uh, new fans who, I mean, today, people, they're, you know, the most untrendy thing you can do is to play a guitar solo and, like, heavy metal, that's, like, <laughs> for for a lot of people, I mean, okay, we are metal, but we're still kind of new, so, uh, it's, it was, I, well, we changed the logo, so, you know, just to mark, this is, in one way, a new chapter in our career. Uh-huh. Alright, man. Could you tell me a little bit about the songs on the album? Because um, I don't really know what they're called. <laughs> I've, okay. been trying to, I've been trying to give the LP, take the LP for a, review, a reviewer, a man, that does reviews. But unfortunately, I can't tape it for them because I don't know what the songs are called. Oh, yeah. So I can't ask him to review it for me. Okay, I can <laughs> give you some quick information about each okay. and every song. Uh, first song is called Get Semana. Yeah, what the, what's the songs about? The song is about uh, betraying yourself, betraying your own dreams. Right. Uh, and you know, Gethsemane, that's like the park where Jesus was betrayed from Judas. And But in this case, you're bo both, you're, you're the one betraying yourself. I mean, this has got nothing to do with religion, this is just pictures Roy are using, you know, for... Right. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much about this song, but that's about... Then you have the next song, that's called Angel. Um... This is a song about accepting your darker sides, your evil sides or darker sides or whatever. Uh, the story of the song is like um, the evil half of Roy calls up the... Evil side of Ega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get evil, man. <laughs> no, he calls uh, the, the, you know, the normal Roy and, you know, just to tell him I'm, I'm here at your side and... Uh, you will never, you know, get rid of me. I will always be a part of you. So it's like you have to accept your good sides and your bad sides. Right. You know, that's what that's about. And then you have a virtual love story. That's number three. And this is about, uh, more, more about internet. Like, yeah, it's a story about the guy really who lost track, you know, in, in this world of growing technology. And I mean, on the internet today, I mean, that's a very nice source you know, to get information and make contact with people around the planet, but it's also uh, very scary in terms so that people, they just forget about who they are, they live this, I mean, I think like, I heard something like 10 out of 12 people or something, you know, communicating on the internet, they're, they uh, are not personal, they are, you know, faking their identity, faking, you know, the way they are, they're just living in kind of a dream world, which is not really healthy and also it you know it's not really good when people also get into um get into uh too much into their computers when when you live for your computers and you're lost you need personal contact with people as well not only like communicating and doing everything through your computer so this is a story about this guy he he does this he's sitting there on his computer and he gets in touch with a girl and he f totally falls in love with her but he can't meet her and he's pretty desperate but there's nothing he can do about it right the next song next song is flow the title track um sorry um this is a pretty anti-materialistic song um it's also about you know that you should like get the whole of yourself be the one that you are you don't need uh, this and this or that and that you know you don't need a pretty face or a fancy car or whatever in order to succeed 
stop flowing with trends. I'm sorry? Stop flowing with trends. So yeah, that that too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Be just be true. That that's what it's about. And uh, and uh, yeah, listen to your heart, flow into your mind. Um, fifth song is a song called "Cry." That's um, uh, that's uh, about actually about you know when when you're under a lot of stress or you're frustrated and you know it's pretty easy that you paint everything black. This is a song uh, about that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, little is it something to do with related with the conception? Why it took so long for you to release the next album? Yeah, I mean we went through lots of frustrating periods. So I mean this is a very personal album. I mean this is we're talking here from self experiences, and I mean I had the same thing. Everything was so fucking black. Right. That you forget about, and that's what's also important with this song "Cry." You know that when everything is so looks like shit, you still have something cool, something to hold on to, still something good in life. And then it's very important that you actually sit back, you know, and and really think about this. So this is actually about crying of joy. That's what the song is about. Huh? Um, then we move on to "Reach Out." That's uh, that's also a song about just being yourself. I mean, her, her Roy is also like playing, you know, with the words God and stuff. Be your own God, you know. Don't let people tell you this and this or that and that. Find yourself. Be the one that you are. Still accept yourself. Um, after reach out, where uh, I have to think now. Uh, is it tell me when I'm gone? I think so. Tell me when I'm gone. Uh, that's uh, that's actually a very pissed off uh, love story. That's. Uh, Roy has been going through a pretty, uh, pretty, uh, well, some shit with his low life right now. I think he's just split with his girlfriend and stuff. And this was at the very end of this relationship. So this is very personal to him, like personal lyric. And uh, it's just about he's very pissed off. Actually, that was also very cool. At the day he sang this song in the studio, he was actually, he, I think he was on the telephone with his girlfriend. And he was so incredibly pissed off. Like naturally pissed off, and uh, and then he went into the vocal room and he sang this, and uh, they came very good across on the tape. Excellent. Um, after that, you have the ballad "Hold On." Uh, that's also a low low story. Uh, uh, that's more about you know trying to, to still <laughs> make your relationship exist or whatever. I mean, Roy haven't been telling me much about these lyrics because they are very personal to him. Uh, very no. satanic and black, black, black. Sorry? Very satanic and black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very satanic <laughs> and black. <laughs> and then we have Cardinal Sin. Uh, this is a song about your thoughts about what's going to happen, you know, the wish of knowledge about what's beyond death. That's what it's about. And also, like, you know, that when you die, if you really have made something worthwhile in life, then, then it's okay to go, I mean, that you die with a smile on your face. Yeah. And also, like, the wish for the knowledge, like I said, you know, to what's happening, where you're going to go, or if, what's going to happen when, when you're dead. Um, and then the last track is Would It Be The Same? And that's also a love story from Roy, which I also have no clue about exactly. It was just everything he tells them about his love songs they're personal <laughs> it, sound, it kind of sounds like a, a morbid sort of a depressive album depression album <laughs> the way he's explaining the songs yeah it's it's depressive but with a very positive attitude it's uh, these are the facts in one way but you know also, you have to swallow all these facts. You have to be. I mean, the, the main thing is you have to be aware of all these things. You know, life goes up and life goes down, and sometimes it's dark. And but it's like when you have accepted all this, then you find inner peace, and that's that's at least what happened to me. I mean, I went through so a lot of shit like the last last two or not the last two years, but like one year, like after the release of the New Multitude and. Uh, and um, you know that things you, you you really need to to accept, and then when you accept this, you have to balance this, and then uh, then then you can be very cool about it. So it's it's got a positive touch to it anyway. But of course, it's very serious themes here. I mean, this is this is the real shit. 
this is probably the most. I mean, this is a very, very personal album, like I said. And, uh, but it's in the way that it should come positive across. That's our intention. Right. Okay. My next uh, question is: uh, How do you see this new album as a progression from your previous albums? Well, first of all, I think the band has matured very, very much, both as musicians, persons, and songwriters. Uh, the production on this album also is. I mean, that's also one thing I. Um, I've personally been opening much more up to the other people so they can, uh, you know, uh, also, uh, you know, do more, you know, everything can actually do whatever he wants, always he could, but still, you know, I was still, like, kind of a little bit too, how should you say it? In charge. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit too much in charge. It's so more uh, of a team effort now, then. Yeah, this is much, much more a team effort. Also with Tommy Newton, the producer, also got, like, totally free hands, you know, it's it's kind of you know it took me a little while you know to trust everybody and now I do it and like mu music musical wise I'm speaking now and um, and that seems to work work very very nice I mean the, the others can put much more personality into what they're doing and of course a team does much better work than just one one single person playing with his mind. So is Tommy Newton a permanent producer for a conception now? Yeah, I mean he feels more or less like a band member. I mean. Uh, uh, it looks very much like we're going to use him on the next album as well. Is, it, is he the only person that is he the only band he works with? His conception, or has he worked with anybody else recently? Um, what has he's been kind of quiet. You don't really hear much of him these days. No, well, he did his Voodoo Cult album That's and the Dave Lombardo thing, yeah. Hmm. That's the Dave Lombardo. Yeah, that was after well, Dave Lombardo had left the band at this time. This was the second Voodoo Cult album. Right. And uh, Terry Hoax and some some more. Not Vladimir was it Vladimir? Terry Hoax? No, the guitar player was it Vladimir from um, Central Media? Despair guitar player was he in the band? In in Voodoo Cult? Yeah. Yeah, that might be. I'm not totally sure. Uh, mm -hmm. That that might be actually. I have the album here. Can I can have a look at it. Um, ah, it's not written on the back. I've never really heard anything about that band much. Voodoo Cult. Gabby. Abu Large, that's the guitar player. Right, no, I don't know that one. Okay. Uh -huh. No, and uh, he's from. No, that's no, that's not true. Um, um, no, and he. No, oh, he's been doing some some things here and there, but not so much metal. I think the last production though he did before us that was the last Sun Voicing album. But really I don't think this album is released in England. Yeah, I've got the Sun Voicing album. Yeah. Yeah, they promised to put my name on the album, but they didn't. So, fuck them. <laughs> 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 you know. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so you think uh, Tommy's a good producer for the band then? Oh yeah, very good, very good. I mean, especially since uh, well, he's very, very good, you know, with sounds, cre very creative. He creates a very, also very nice atmosphere in the studio, him and his wife. His wife is also always there. Right. And, you know, we always have good fun, we enjoy the work, and that's something you wouldn't expect when you work so hard. I mean, we work more than three months, uh, approximately 12 hours a day, and... That's very heavy work, very concentrated work, and then uh, still you're able to enjoy it, and that makes it, you know, very funny, very cool. Right, cool. My next question is, um, do you think that this new album is more commercial than the previous albums? If so, why? Um, I think it reaches out to a wider range of audience, yes, but uh, I, this is because it's like I was telling you before, I think it's more you know up with the time. This is this is the first conception album where we really, you know, uh, we're living at the time we're in. This comes very much because from that uh, 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 finally, uh, I mean, for so many years, I thought all the new music coming out was just crap, crap, crap. Yeah, There's been a lot of shit coming out uh, recently. But uh, but like last 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 year, there's some bands some bands which which I liked very much. Like uh, actually, one album which was very uh, inspirational for me was uh, David Bowie Outside, a very dark and uh, industrial album actually. Well, wow, you, you you like the industrial music? Um, not uh, just a few bands, but 
what I like, I really like. But yeah. I think there are not many bands which are really doing this great. Prodigy, I like very much. Oh, well, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got different tastes. Oh, man. You're not going to start something like Prodigy so Oh, no, no. We're a rock <laughs> band. That's very important. We're no industrial. But, I mean, uh, you have a couple of influences on the album, which, like, on Reach Out, the Loop there and stuff. I think There's actually one song on the album that sounds a little bit close to Stuck Mojo, a song off their album. It's like a drum machine sort of thing at the beginning. Yeah, that's you know really what I mean. Wait, which band did you say? Stuck Mojo. I don't know this band. In America, they did an album, and the drumming at the beginning is like a drum machine, sort of, like yours. Yeah. And it sounds just the same. Oh, you I know. didn't know that. Very similar. Hmm. Not quite the same, but similar. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're getting quite popular in Europe at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, Stuck Mojo. Cool band. Yeah, so. no, but I like this. I like this blend when, it, when you're not doing it too much. This creates new atmospheres, you know. This yeah. You know, I think one of the best albums I heard of last year was Psychotic Walls. Psychotic Walls. Oh, I love those guys' music. They, those oh, yeah. guys rock. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I haven't. I haven't really heard uh, heard this last album. That's maybe I should check that one out. Yeah, you want to check it out? So yeah. I mean, if you like, I can do your copy of it on tape. Hmm. Yeah. No that would be cool. You know, I've, have you heard the new Queen's Reich? I heard three songs. What do you think? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I would, think Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, I had really hard time to swallow it, uh, but I, I don't really want to speak about it before I heard the entire thing and heard yeah. it a couple of times. But what I heard was, "What the fuck are they doing?" Yeah, these, those guys are, are not going to be on EMR for much longer. No, I think they're digging their own grave. Yep. I'm very afraid of that. Yeah, because they're a good band, good musicians. Yeah. They're following the trends, trying to be alternative. You know, all this Seattle stuff sucks. Yeah. You know. But I mean, that's so funny. I mean, I think also that this trend is gonna go away now and then come out with this at this time. I mean, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> I have recently just received the new Fate's Warning album. Yeah, how that's, was that? That's good. Yeah? It's one song with 12 parts. It's a conception. Concept, sorry, it's a concept album. Yeah? Pretty much like No Exit. Hmm, that sounds so cool. It's a good album. Yeah, yeah. we were almost, uh, there was actually a plan we were gonna do a tour with them, but this is no longer a plan. Yeah, uh, that kind of sucks. And yeah, that would be cool. That would yeah. be very cool. Excellent. Right then, Tog, my next question is, uh, were there any tracks on the new LP which didn't make the album? Um, we had, well, actually we wrote between 30 and 40 songs. Mm -hmm. uh, from this, we had like 15 we picked out when Tommy came, and then we took another three, no, two out. We recorded, no, three out. We recorded 12. One is a bonus track from uh, Ne4 uh, Japan, and another one we didn't quite finish because it didn't really take the direction we thought it would. So we thought it was better to leave it. I'm kind of, kind of. It's a shame that the new album isn't very long, with the amount of time that you've been off the scene. Yeah, well, I'm kind of. I was kind of hoping it to be like 60 minutes at <laughs> least. You know. Yeah, but I think it's better, you know, to have, uh, you know, 40. I don't know how long it's 44, 45 minutes, or real kick ass, and have like 60 minutes, and you have a couple of weeks songs. That's you're much more happier with your album when you just you can really, you know, enjoy each and every song yourself. Yeah, it's kind of like I've been. I played it last night, and before I knew it, it was over. Yeah, it was over before I even knew. You know, it was that <laughs> show. I was like, shit, is that it already? <laughs> you know, you just get into the album and it, and it finishes. Yeah, well... well <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's kind of quite normal playing time for an album, don't you think? Yeah, you know, most CDs these days are usually longer than 40 minutes, you know. With yeah. the price that you pay for a CD. Yeah, know. that's true, that's true. But, uh, but, I mean, still, like I said, when you have, like... You, for us, this was the ultimate, the strongest songs, and if there would be two more songs as strong as these, of course, then we would put them on, but we didn't feel like we had them, so then we thought this was the better way. Yeah. Alright, cool. Did you have any guest musicians on this new album? Um, so? no, not except from Tron, no. Uh, did you, were you thinking of using anybody? Uh, no, yeah, we were actually thinking about one, but we, we never asked her, that was Dalbello. She lives in Cologne, not so far away from uh, from Hanover, and we were thinking maybe it would be cool to have some female vocals here or yeah. there. What band is she with, or is it just? No, she's uh, Dalbello. She's uh, she's the, she she wrote the "Gonna Get Close to You" the Queen Strike cover that one. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, we never we never uh, I think we never got her telephone number or something. So that was like just a thought we played with, but that never came to. Uh, Oh, actually, Tommy's wife sings one word. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, on the end of the second verse, an angel, that's like a metamorphosis. It starts with Roy's voice, which goes into her voice, like the voice is changing in one word. Right, okay then. Right, then the next question, Tog, is um, how long did it take to record the album, and where was it recorded? Um, we started, when was that, middle of October. We finished mixing, I think, the 5th of February. This took place in Hanover, Germany, in a studio called Stairway to Heaven. That's Tommy Newton's personal studio. Right. Are you happy with the end results of the album? Oh, yeah, very, very happy. Very yeah. happy. I think everything's, like, all the music is, like, perfect. All the drums sound good, the guitars, and... And uh, I was totally bummed out with the sound. Tommy came, uh, or were able to create on this album. I mean, that's... I'm very, very, of course, you have some details here and there you, of course, would like to change. But it's always like this. You always hear things, you know, after... You did it, but it's too late, you know. And but I'm still, you could say, I'm incredibly happy, very proud of this album. Excellent. All right, then the next question, Tog, is: Are you going to be doing a video for this album? And if so, which track? Uh, be, what's the concept behind it? Actually, I mean, maybe. I well, it doesn't matter. We have one idea um, to. Uh, I mean, this is you know a little bit like on the borderline of what's cool or not but still this is what the record company really believes in so we said after long discussions we said okay we can do this um this is the, the ballad hold on you know with the strings yeah uh well these are not real strings these are only keyboard samples but uh the plan is to go down to prague um, to record uh, this ballad again with the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra and also with uh, uh, this is a Norwegian uh, singer, she's called Venke Myhre uh, spell that? <laughs> <laughs> W-E-N-C-H-E M and that's the first name and then M-Y-R-E uh, M-H-Y-R-E Kind of a hard name to remember, so I had to ask you. <laughs> you know, so is this song you said it's going to have like an orchestra? Yeah. Is this going to be released as a single with an orchestra? Yeah, this, this is going to be a single and then also a video. So it's going to be t totally different from the LP version. Yeah, this is going to be a new version with real orchestra and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. But uh, this this plan uh, is not hundred percent yet. So, but this is the way it looks right now. Excellent. So um, I just hope. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a little bit, this is our producer's plan, really, so, I mean, we have to check all the financial situations with the record company, but they're very into doing this. They're the one who forced us into doing this uh, in the first place. But so, well, we would, uh, we're also under negotiating about doing another video, doing uh, the song Flow or whatever. Yeah. Which is a more, like, up I think up you should do one ballad and one rock song. Yeah, it's very Not important to, to do. Not people think that you know I'm totally went out you know yeah, yeah exactly i mean and that's but that's where we had our problems you know do we're gonna do a video and that's a ballad <laughs> mm -hmm. but i mean okay cool. it's better than nothing but we also want to have a, a rock video i mean that's very important for us uh, do you think it, have you ever been approached doing an acoustic album because a lot of people are doing these acoustic jams have you ever thought of doing one um no and if you're a waste of time yeah it's a waste of time and everybody's doing it we if we were, if I would do something like this, then I would. Uh, in that case, it would be different, and it would be a Spanish album or something like this. Right. Cool. But I mean, this we haven't really thought of. But I think, I mean, we just want to go our own way. We just want to do our own thing, and I mean, n not, you know, do what follow what most people are doing. Okay, we sound more modern now, but that's not because we want to sell more. That's because we just think it's cool. Yeah. Um, of course. Because of course we want to sell more. That's uh, I mean we want to be uh, as big as Pink Floyd if possible. But uh, I mean uh, <coughs> I think uh, you know to 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 create the best music you just have to listen to your art you know and just just write and don't think about what's hip and what's not. So uh, it's a hard hard and long way, but maybe one day we'll make it. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been approached to play the Dynamo Festival? Yeah, I'd really like to play the Dynamo Festival, but uh, I understand it's very heavy to, to get in there. And I mean, also this year I heard some of the acts, I mean, you have very, very yeah, I'm going heavy. this year. You're going there? Yeah. yeah. The Marilyn Manson's playing, which I think sucks. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I saw Marilyn Manson in Tokyo last month. Oh, man, he sucks. I don't know what everybody For... sees in him. He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, I know there's, there's a big black metal stage there this year. Yeah. So maybe Ingar should go to that. Oh, yeah, Bam. Ingar should go. Oh, yeah, I'd love it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, it would be cool to play there, but we're not on the bill now. Yeah. What's happening with Noise Records? Are, are, they, are they supporting you more now? Oh well, yeah, now they're the really difficulties kick. you had in the previous. Yeah, I mean, uh, we sorted all the problems out, and now they're really good with us. So right today, I would say, yeah, very cool. Right. And also, like Sandra, she really kicks ass, and you know, all these new people there, they're you know, very nice people and understanding, and they're they're really doing a great job, uh, you know promoting this right now. Was there any point you was going to leave Noise Records with all the shit you went through? Yeah, but when we went through the shit, then we wanted to leave, and uh, an auntie had to come up here, that's like the new boss. Yeah, uh, yeah. She had to come up here, and we had a meeting, but then we talked everything over. I mean, we also, I mean, also, uh, a little bit of this shit we had with the record company was also uh, created by our former manager. We also had a management, which we fired uh, in the Christmas. So we're also on a new management right now. Oh, cool. so what bands have uh, Conception played with besides Skycloud? <laughs> yeah, I mean the coolest bands we play with, that's like festival uh, type of thing that um, uh, was Fate No More slash Clawfinger. That's the coolest bands and we play with uh, Gamma Ray on several occasions. Sorry? Gamma Ray. Oh, Gamma Ray. Rage. Uh, Threshold from England. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, so that, that's like the most most known bands we play. So with. You play with a lot of noise bands. Yeah. Well, that's they always seem to like, try to get you know all the. I think this is actually a policy within all these uh, you know uh, independent metal uh, labels right now. They just want to have like when what the bands. A label go on to, goes on tour, then it should be supported from another band on the label. Yes, yeah, so they have to pay extra money on the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 so Which band on my record do you like to tour with? Um, it looks like we might gonna do a co-headline tour with Stratovarius. That's cool. Say hello yeah. to Timo for me if you meet him. Yeah, I'll do that. And uh, and also I think Elegy is gonna join in. Oh, I know those guys real well, Martin. Yeah. Yeah, I've stayed at his house for a few times. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, well, never met the allergy guys, never. I mean, if if they're going to join the tour, then I'm going to get to know them pretty good. Is this going to be coming to England? Because we don't seem to get any good shows over here. We get all this shit alternative crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. It, uh, I think it depends on sales. I mean, with Skyclad, it was easy because they're English and they... Uh, I don't know, it depends how many albums they sell. I think, I don't know... Uh, uh, my impression, correct me if I'm wrong, but my impression is that like the more, you know, standard metal music like Stratovarius uh, are not re being released uh, in England anymore. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks very much. So, so I mean, there is there is people in England that like rock music. Yeah, there's, I guess better are quite many actually, but yeah, it's just but I mean the fucking scene is just too bothered about all the trends yeah, and hives. Yeah, seen Ed's pants here. Really. Yeah. You know, Rage Against the Machines, I mean, all in bands, so, yeah. you know. But I mean, we're anyway going to do, we're going to uh, put some pressure on and do everything we can, you know, to get back there and play, because we had a very cool time doing this tour with it with Sky Club. That was Yeah, I was kind of really, really pissed off that there was only about ten people watching you in Bradford. Mm. And when Sky Club came, like, it was packed. Yeah. Like, come on, these guys are from nowhere, you know. <laughs> Give them some support. I was really pissed off, because if you hadn't have played that tour, I wouldn't have gone into that concert at all. Because I think Skyclad suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, because I like your music. Yeah. Know? Plus, I know you guys, so I wanted to meet, meet you in person and say, hi, what's up, you know? Yeah. So, I sent you some photos from that concert. Yeah. Did you get them? I think so, I think so. Um, you still got them somewhere? I, I think you did not send them to me, but to Ingar or something. I think it might have been Roy, actually. Yeah, that could be. I think I saw some pictures. I, I think I remember this. Yeah, actually, this gig we also got a couple of guitars stolen. <laughs> Yeah, did you? Oh, yeah, I think you remember you saying something yeah, about yeah. that. Did I you? had one stolen and the uh, the guy from Skyclad had one. Did stolen. you ever get them back? No, but I got uh, I had my insurance. I actually got more money back from my insurance that I actually paid for my you guitar. Got that guitar. <laughs> so that was cool. <laughs> I mean, this was just only my warm up guitar before the gig, so it's no important guitar for me. So that was just yeah. 
cool. <laughs> right then, so next question to Ogre is about the Norwegian scene. Is it being dominated by black metal? Yeah. Do you think that metal, the metal scene is dead or is it coming back? Uh, it looks like uh, more and more, you know, metal bands are coming back now. I think the the black metal slowly, you know, starts to get down again. It's been quite big for. I mean, in Norway, it's not really that big either because I mean, there's not so many metal kids there. But like one good example, there's a magazine here called Scream. They like just a uh, normal metal magazine. Yeah. And uh, one year ago, they sold 1,500 copies, and they had like this for for years and years. And all of a sudden, now. Uh, at the end of last year, all of a sudden now they sell 5,000 copies. So it kind of looks like there is a revolution going on. Maybe the metal music is coming back. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that Exodus have reformed and they're playing Dynamo. Yeah, actually. yeah, there are loads of actually the Omen. Is also Yo, those guys rock. <laughs> I don't know the band. I just know this is also one of the bands who reformed. Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith got together doing more like Number of the Beast kind of Iron Maiden stuff again. Yeah, and lots of people you know around now starting to do this uh, this metal again. So that's yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of happy. That I'm really glad that Omen have reformed because I was I used to listen to them when I was a little, you know, about like fifteen or something. You know, yeah. I used to really listen to them. Omen. They have a new singer now, I think. In yeah, the uh, guitarist is son Kenny. Kenny's mm. son. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know if you've ever heard their music before. No, I don't think so. I don't think I ever heard it. Uh-huh. Cool. So I know there's a lot of record, uh, a lot of magazines like Kerrang say that metal's dead. Are you aware? Uh, have, they, have they reviewed you on your album yet? Uh, Kerrang, I don't know. I have no clue what's going on in England. I know for sure the album's going to be released because, uh, uh, and uh, I don't, the distributor. That's that's all the information I got from England so far. The distributor in England, they Is that like. Pinnacle? Pinnacle, okay, they like the album very much. Yeah, and that's all I know so far. So I mean, uh, Kerrang! And is Metal Hammer still around? Yeah, I think so. Did uh, you say that Pinnacle don't like your album? Yeah, they very much. They did like our album. They did. That's cool. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, that's the only thing I heard from England so far. But I mean, I I suspect we're gonna be slaughtered by Kerrang! But we'll see. Yeah, who gives a shit? They don't know what they're <laughs> talking about anyway. They're a bunch of E1 pricks, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't worry about it, talk. Just just think about the fanzines yeah, the yeah. that are going to help you. Yeah. You know, come yeah. just suck. Yeah. You know, so right then. Um, so when will we see Conception in England? Is there a possibility this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, like we were talking about, hopefully, 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 just uh, hope we get a chance. I mean, we will do whatever we can, you know, to get over there. But of course, uh, this is also an economical uh, question. I mean, if it's. Uh, but I think it should be possible, I and mean, we very, very much would like to come over and play. I right. mean, we miss England. Yeah, just, just watch your guitars this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put a chain on them, a lock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have a, a couple of bodyguards just looking after my guitars. <laughs> <laughs> well, Armed. Well, then, so, uh, thanks for the interview. Yeah, thank you very much, too. best of luck with the album. Thank you very much. Good Same well. to you. And you All the best. To to the readers. Thanks, Doug. Sorry? I said thanks. Do you have anything to say to your readers? Yeah, I, readers? Hope, they, I hope they like the new album. And for those of them who have been supporting us, extra special thanks. And hopefully we see them very soon.